Fellas, in every single UFC weight class, there's a perfect mix of different styles from grappling and striking. There are some people in each weight class who have a very grappling and very wrestling heavy approach to things. They love to initiate the grappling. And then there are some people in the weight class who tend to keep it on the feet, like to strike, like to keep it at range, and just like to engage in fights on the feet. So we're going to be going through every single UFC weight class and picking out the best style versus style matchup between grapplers against grapplers and strikers against strikers. And when I say the best, I'm not talking about the highest grossing pay-per-view. I'm not talking about the, the most high level. I'm talking about the best to watch from a fan's perspective. So we'll start off with a heavyweight division and we'll go in there with a grappler versus a grappler matchup first. Now, I feel like when it comes to grappling in the heavyweight division, you can't not talk about Jelton Almeida. He is basically the human version of a heavyweight grappler and he does his job well. Listen, he might not be the most entertaining. He might not be getting the highest pay-per-views. He might not be the most liked, but there's one thing for sure and he's probably the most dominant grappler right now, at least on a consistent basis. In the heavyweight division, he's faced grapplers like Curtis Blades, like Alexander Romanov and he's done really well against them. So I'm going to go for Jelton I made it to be the first grappler in the heavyweight division, and I would put him against Sergey Spivak, another heavy grappler. He's got kind of got underrated jujitsu, just got a really, like, not a really unpredictable submission against Marcin Tabura that I don't think anyone expected, especially for two heavyweights. And I think he's a really crafty grappler, is Sergey Spivak, and I'll talk about why. Um, but yeah, Sergey Spivak, just a really good submission artist in the heavyweight division, one of the most underrated grapplers. And one thing I will say about Sergey Spivak is I like how he's got a completely different grappling approach to other heavyweights. He's not just a generic go for a single or double leg takedown. I like how he likes getting people in the clinch, tripping them up, using judo, letting people get back up just to wear them back down again and exhaust them. He's got actually quite an entertaining uh, standpoint when it comes to grappling. And I actually like watching Sergey Spivak fight, the way that he just completely mauls people and overwhelms them. And he's definitely one of the best heavyweights right now when it comes to grappling. And I would actually be intrigued to see him against Jelton Almeida, who is another dominant grappler. And like I said, he might not be your favourite in the heavyweight division, but there's one thing for sure in that he's dominant. Jelton Almeida is very dominant. I mean, he had one of the most like, boring performances against Derek Lewis, but he completely wore him out. Same thing when he fought Rosenstrike and found the submission. Even against Curtis Blades. Blades is one of the best wrestlers in the division, and I know he lost that fight, but he was dominating the grappling exchanges against Curtis Blades, which is something we rarely ever see. Jelton Almeida versus Sergey Spivak. I would probably favor Almeida to win. I think he's the best grappler right now in the heavyweight division. Um, and I know there's guys like Tom Aspinall and John Jones, but I'd say those guys are more well-rounded rather than just pure grapplers. But if we're talking pure grapplers, I'd say that Almeida is the best, but his toughest test so far, well, well, toughest test that he can possibly have when it comes to pure grappling right now, is probably Sergey Spivak. He's on a roll. He's quite underrated, he's Spivak, when it comes to grappling. So I'm going to go with Almeida versus Spivak for a fun grappler versus grappler uh, matchup. I don't think there'd be any stand-up between the two of them, maybe from Sergey Spivak, but I think it would be mostly grappling. And then the striking, the fun part of the heavyweight division, a striker versus a striker matchup. Similar, how, similar to how you can't really mention heavyweights without grappling, without mentioning uh, Jelton Almeida. I don't think you can really mention striker in the heavyweight division without mentioning Cyril Garn. I mean, he's probably the best. Like I said, I know there's a few guys like Aspinall in the division who are more well-rounded, but when it comes to pure striking, Cyril Garn's got to be the best. I mean, he's already got a really good resume in the heavyweight division of just pure striking masterclasses like he did when he beat Volkov a few years ago, Spivak, Lewis, uh, Tui Vaza, Rosenstrike as well. He's got a really good resume just from pure beating people with the striking. He's definitely one of the best strikers in the heavyweight division. He's super athletic. He's super elusive. He's super quick. I know people say this about guys like Tom Aspinall and some other heavyweights, but he genuinely does move like a middleweight from how good his striking is. And he's never been outstruck in the UFC to a high extent, maybe when he got dropped once by Tui Vaza. But apart from that, he's never really been outstruck in the UFC. So we've got to we include Cyril Garn. And I'm actually going to put him against Alexander Volkov. Obviously, they're going to be taking each other on at UFC uh, 3 or 8, which I can't wait for in a rematch. Um, and obviously, we saw these guys fight the first time, went to a decision. Cyril Garn took the win. But I feel like Alexander Volkov's kind of been on a second wind in his in his fights recently. He's on a four-fight winning streak. Three of them coming by way of finish. Finished Rosenstrike in the first round. In his most recent fight, absolutely demolished Sergei Pavlovich for three rounds straight, which nobody expected to see. Um, and he's a really impressive striker, is Alexander Volkov. He seems to be on a second wind in his UFC career. He, I love how he uses his range. He's a really good kickboxer. And it's very, very rare that we see Alexander Volkov get outstruck in the UFC. The only guy that's been able to do it recently is uh, Cyril Garn. And I can't wait for the rematch shot. Cyril Garn versus Volkov. Probably the best striker versus striker matchup you can make in the UFC. And we are going to be seeing this at UFC 308. And then for the light heavyweight division... 
a grappler versus a grappler in the light heavyweight division. Now, for the first grappler, I've gone with Magomed Ankalaev. I feel like you just got to go with Ankalaev. He has outgrappled some of the other decent grapplers in the division, like when he faced Jan Blachowicz and outgrappled Jan Blachowicz. And he does kind of go for grappling first. I know he loves to talk about how he strikes, but when his striking doesn't work, he likes to go for the grappling. And he has got that wrestling base in the back pocket, even though I would count Ankalaev as more of a striker, if anything. Out of all the light heavyweights right now, I'd say he's displayed the more dominant grappling out of everyone else at the highest level in the light heavyweight division right now. Now, when it comes to Ankalaev against somebody else, there isn't really many grapplers in the light heavyweight division. If you look at the top 10, Ankalaev is the one, only one that kind of really stands out as a grappler. I was going to go with Blahovic, but we've just seen that fight. So I know he's faced him before, but I'm going to go with Nikita Krylov. In my opinion, the most underrated light heavyweight right now. I don't blame people for not talking about him because he's genuinely just left MMA. I know he's going to be back soon against, uh, what's his name, the Azamat Merzakhanov. Um, but no, Nikita Krylov, he faced Ankalaev before. He was able to hold his own in the grappling exchanges. He didn't let Ankalaev completely overwhelm him. And his last fight, he submitted to Ryan Spann. He's got kind of wicked jiu-jitsu as well, does Nikita Krylov. Listen, he's not a heavy, heavy grappler, is Nikita Krylov. And I wouldn't say he's as good as Ankalaev because we have seen this fight before. But I'd really be intrigued to see this fight again from a grappling perspective because I still think that Krylov's one of the best submission artists in the light heavyweight division. I think Ankalaev's the best grappler in the light heavyweight division. Ankalaev versus Nikita Krylov, even though I don't necessarily want to see this fight next if we're talking just pure MMA, but if we're talking pure grappling, is. It's kind of the only fight you can make. I mean, we could have gone with Jan Blachowicz, but we saw that fight like two years ago. And apart from that, there's not really any of our grapplers. So I'm going to go with Ankalaev versus Nikita Krylov part two for a grappler versus a grappler. And then for strikers versus strikers, I mean... Alex Pereira, no questions need to be asked, uh, the way that he knocked out Jamal Hill, I mean his entire light heavyweight career has just been him displaying his striking, not even just light heavyweight but middleweight as well, but it's like specifically his light heavyweight career, he's just knocking out elite strikers like Yuri Brahaska and Jamal Hill and out striking guys like Jan Blachowicz as well, he is the best striker in the light heavyweight division, some may say he's the best or at least the top 5 best strikers right now in the UFC, definitely one of the best kickboxers in the UFC and he's definitely the best striker in the light heavyweight division so we've got to include Alex Pereira now when it comes to his opponents I don't really want to put him against somebody that he's already fought like Jamal Hill who he put out there in a minute um, and I don't want to put him against like Yiri who he's beaten twice or Jan Blaho, which he's beaten already so if we're talking fresh opponents I'd actually be kind of intrigued to see him versus Volkan Uzdemir um I know Uzdemir is not kind of, you know, someone that people think of when they think of high-level light heavyweights, but I think Uzdemir's kind of been on a bit of a streak recently, and I, th I wouldn't mind seeing this fight. I'd rather see Alex Pereira versus Uzdemir than Alex Pereira versus Clear Round Trainer anyway, because Volkan Uzdemir, he recently got that really impressive knockout against Johnny Walker, and I know it's not really hard to knock out Johnny Walker in 2024, but he has got the boxing fundamentals. He is very powerful. He nearly finished Yuri Brahaska in Yuri's debut in the UFC as well. I know it's easy to say that he nearly did what he did, but he genuinely was seconds away from finishing Yuri Brahaska in Yuri's UFC debut, and he's overall a really impressive striker in the light heavyweight division, is Volkan Uzdemir, he's more well-rounded if anything, but I think he's a really good striker, and I think he would have a good boxing threat to Alex Pereira, obviously I'd favour Pereira to win this fight, but if we're talking fresh matchups, I wouldn't mind seeing him face somebody like Volkan Uzdemir, who is very, very powerful in the light heavyweight division, um, definitely got that knockout threat, definitely a really seasoned boxer, is Volkan Uzdemir, so I would probably go Alex Pereira versus Volkan Uzdemir if we're talking just a pure striking matchup that we haven't seen so far, um, I guess like I said, Alex Pereira versus Khalil Roundtree could be up there as well, but the middleweight division, grappler versus a grappler, middleweight's kind of, middleweight's kind of, you know, just spoiled with how many grapplers they've got, we talk about light heavyweight having no grapplers, middleweight's got a lot, and I'm going to go with Hamzat Shemaev, I mean, one of the biggest grappling prospects, if you still want to call him that, in the UFC, his entire UFC career is just a bit of a display of his grappling, I mean, that fight with Usman really impressed me in the middleweight division, the way that he was able to just dominate Usman in that first round with grappling, you could talk about how he faded in the second and the third, but the fact he was able to do that in the first round regardless against Usman was super impressive, um, the, the way that he just ragdolled Kevin Holland, the iconic fight with Li Jingliang, the fact that he took barely any significant strikes in his first four fights in the UFC because of how dominant his grappling was. He is just the, the definition of a chaotic wrestler. He just goes for the grappling. He just initiates the grappling immediately. No one can really seem to do anything about it. So I feel like in the middleweight division, you've got to go with Hamzat Chimaev. We all know what he's going to do. He's going to initiate the grappling. But if you're not prepared, he's going to absolutely ragdoll you. And even if you are prepared, he's going to have some success unless your name's Gilbert Burns. And I'm going to put him against Brendan Allen. 
Again, I feel like Allen's kind of underrated because people kind of just see him as another boring contender. Do I think Brendan Allen's going to be a champion? No, I don't think Allen's going to be a champion. But if you look at his record, he's had a very dumb. He's like, on, he's like kind of on a dominant streak of grappling. I think he's got a record or he's got some of the most rare naked chokes in UFC history. Out of most of his recent fights, most of them have been finishing in rare naked choke. He's got a very dominant rare naked choke and he's beaten some high level grapplers. Only two fights ago, he was able to submit Paul Craig in a fight night main event, which was super impressive considering Paul Craig's jiu jitsu caliber. Andre Muniz, another fairly decent grappler, ranked 11 at the time. Allen was able to finish Andre Muniz as well. Brendan Allen's a really good grappler and I know there's some guys like Jack Hermanson but Hermanson's not that dominant of a grappler these days he tends to be more on the feet Allen's got a very dominant grappling style I feel like Chimaya versus Allen would ironically be quite a fun fight because even if Chimaya was able to take Allen down he's got to deal with Allen's takedown defense and then obviously he's got to deal with Allen's jiu-jitsu so I feel like grappler versus a grappler I'm going to go with Chimaya versus Brendan Allen now strike is in the middleweight division there's a lot of strikes in the middleweight division too for the first striker, I'm going to go with someone that you just, you, you know you're safe when you pick this fighter. And it's Robert Whittaker. Undoubtedly one of the best strikers right now in the middleweight division, but not just right now. He's always been a high-level grappler. I mean, in his recent fight when he knocked out Ikram Aliskarov, the fights with Paolo Costa, Kelvin Gastel, and Marvin Vittori, pretty much any high-level middleweight he's ever faced, he's been able to outstrike. Apart from the recent losses to Drickers Duplessis and the fights with Adesanya, even the second one was questionable. He's always outstruck every opponent that he's got against. His ability to set up shots like the one-two head kick, his overall stab like stability when it comes to kickboxing, the fact that he's able to be fresh for five rounds straight, or he can get the finish in the first, he doesn't care. He's a dangerous kickboxer, but more importantly, he's so technical, and he's definitely one of the best uh, strikers right now in the middleweight division. And I'm going to put him against Kyle Brallo. I know you probably be expecting me to put him against somebody like Adesanya or Strickland, but these guys aren't the people that come to mind when I think of the best striker versus striker matchup. Okay, they might be some of the best in the light heavyweight division from a, you know from a talent perspective and maybe a pay per view perspective, but as far as entertainment goes, I'm going with Kyle Brallo. He, you know, he's, he's a very rangy striker, as Kyle Brallo, but he's very dangerous. Comes from that fighting nerds gym. He's had a massive rise in the UFC because of how effective his striking's been. Recently got a really impressive win over Jared Cannonier, which was a very big test for him. He was able to pass that test and he looked really good in that fight. And he's now a top five ranked middleweight in the world for good reason as well. Kyle Brallo versus Robert Whittaker. Am I saying this fight should necessarily be next? I mean, Whitaker's going to be facing Chumai, but would I say this fight should be next? Probably not, but is it a fact that I'd like to see? Yes, I think this is probably like likely one of the best middleweight striking matchups you can make. Or not just middleweight, but one of the best striking matchups you can make in the UFC. Whitaker always been, you know, a high-level striker. Top three greatest middleweights of all time. Always usually, well, usually the guy that's going to be elite on the feet in all of his fights. And then you've got Kyle Brello, this up-and-coming striker who's hair calls and chaos. He isn't some Ikram Aliskarov who's had like two wins in the UFC against bums, he just knocked out, well he didn't knock out, but he just beat Jared Cannonier. before that it was on an absolute roll, so Kyle Brallo, Robert Whittaker, I'm going to say he's the best striker versus striker matchup you can make in the middleweight division, now for welterweight, the grappler versus the grappler, you've got to go with Bala Mohammed when it comes to grappling, again, no questions really need to be asked, just dominated Leon Edwards um, in their fight, and Leon Edwards is a very well-rounded guy with good takedown defense, people forget about that, and just his come up to the belt was just him, he, again, similar to guys like Jelton Ahmed, it might not be interesting, it might not be, you know, causing you to want to buy pay-per-views, but it's, he's a very gra having a grappling-heavy style that has worked well in his favor when he faces guys like Wonderboy and Luke and over the, all these other guys. He's got a very dominant wrestling dominant style, and then I'd put him against Shavkat Rachmanov. Hopefully, we do see this fight next for the belt because I think Shavkat's definitely earned his earned his right to fight for the belt. But yeah, you've got to go with Shavkat as well. Um, I think he's 18 and 0, and he's finished every single person that he's ever faced. Again, his recent fight against Stephen Wonderboy, Tom Snagow with good takedown defense, just took him down and got another finish before that submitted Jeff Neal he's such a crafty submission artist if Shafkat Rangmanov he might not be the generic double leg takedown keep you on the Mac type of guy like a Bala Mohammed is um but I love how he's always able to find finishers and more importantly, always able to find submissions from everywhere. I think it's a big threat for both of these guys. I think Shavkat's got to deal with the unrelentless pressure and the wrestling of Bala Muhammad. I think Bala Muhammad's got to deal with the danger factor of Shavkat Ramanov and the fact that he can pull a submission out of anywhere. I think this is a really intriguing grappler versus grappler matchup um, in the welterweight division. And I hope we do see this next for the belt. And then for a striker versus striker matchup, the first striker that I'm choosing is Michael Morales, an up-and-coming striker in the middleweight division, just finished Neil Magna. He's now ranked. I love watching Michael Morales fight. Now, he might not have the best grappling. He might not have the best takedown defense, but this is a striker versus striker matchup, so none of that matters. He's a very dangerous striker. I love how he's very calm in there as well. He's very calm and calculated, and it seems to work in his favor because he's another undefeated fighter on this list. So I'm going to go with Michael Morales as the first striker in the welterweight division, and I'm going to put him against MVP. Some people think MVP is one of the best 
strikers in the UFC. Again, similar to Michael Morales, his takedown defense might not be there, but his hands and his striking has always been effective. I mean, even before the UFC, MVP was being hyped up for how good his striking was. People were calling him a can crusher, when in reality, we know now that he's not a can crusher. He was just disposing these people so easily because his striking was that good. Joins the UFC, kind of bullies Kevin Holland on the feet, um, just completely outstrikes him. And even in that fight with Ian Gary, Gary had to go full, you know, just dagger Sani wrestling mode. He had to go for the takedowns in that fight. He had to initiate the grappling in every single given opportunity because he was getting completely outstruck in that fight by MVP. MVP was finding the shot very effectively against Ian Gary. And Ian Gary couldn't really have a response on the feet, so he had to initiate the grappling. So for the welterweight division, I'm going to go with Michael Morales versus MVP. I think this is such an interesting fight because you've got MVP, more of a veteran in MMA, but he's still, um, I also would class him as one of the best strikers in the UFC. You've got Michael Morales, this guy who's on his come up, just beating people, just got a really impressive win over Neil Magny. Both of them are yet to beat a really high, high level guy in the UFC because Michael, well, MVP's best win is Kevin Holland. Michael Morales' best win is Neil Magny. So I feel like a match between the two of them, and I wouldn't even mind this fight if it was next. They're both in that stage in their UFC career. Where I wouldn't even mind if they, they get matched up against each other next because I think this will be a spectacle to see on the feet. So I'm going to go with Michael Morales versus MVP for the welterweight division. Then there. The lightweight division grapplers, again, you can't mention grappler and not call, you know, you know, not mention Islam Makachev. Not only is he the best grappler in the light heavyweight division, he's arguably the best in the UFC right now. Just look at his past couple of fights, submitted and put to sleep Dustin Poirier, submitted one of the best submission artists in the UFC in Charles Oliveira. His entire come up to the belt was just him dominating people with grappling like he did with Drew Dober, Bobby Green, Dan Hooker. Everyone he faces, he just completely dominates with wrestling. He's the best wrestler right now in the UFC. He's one of the most dangerous just grapplers right now in the UFC. He's so dominant with his grappling, so you've got to go with Islam Makachev, and I'm going to put him against somebody that we've seen him against before, and we're probably going to see him against next, Armand Sarukian. It is the fight to make next in the light heavy, uh, the, in the lightweight division, and I feel like a lot of the, 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 you know, a big reason why I personally want to see this fight is because I want to see how Islam Makachev does when he's facing another heavy grappler, because again, Armand Sarukian's a heavy grappler. We saw it in that fight with Charles Oliveira at UFC 300 this year, where he initiated the grappling against a guy as high level when it comes to jiu-jitsu with Charles Oliveira. He was able to just completely overwhelming with wrestling. He's always been a high-level wrestler as Armand Sarukian, and he's even had moments in that fight with Islam Makachev when they, fought, when they fought the first time, where his wrestling didn't even look half bad. I want to see this rematch. I do. I would definitely favor Islam Makachev to win this fight, and I know Islam Makachev's more well-rounded, if anything, but I think from a grappling perspective, it's probably the best grappling and the most high-level and probably the most fun-to-see grappling fight you can possibly make right now in the lightweight division. So I'm going to go with Makachev versus Saruki. And then for the featherweight division, a striker versus a striker. Oh, sorry, the lightweight division, a striker versus a striker. Justin Gaethje. I mean, it doesn't matter if he's on the receiving end of a big finish. It doesn't matter if he's the one getting a big finish. It doesn't matter if he's in a back and forth brawl. He's never in a boring fight. I mean, he's probably the most consistently entertaining fighter in the UFC. Someone that you just know, no matter who he's against, no matter what, it's not going to be a boring fight. So you've just got to go with Justin Gaethje. And I'm going to put him against Dan Hooker, another guy who's kind of been on a second win of his UFC career recently. His recent fight against Gamrot was the fight of the night for UFC 305. His fight before that was one of the best fights of 2023 when he faced Jalen Turner. He's had so many iconic fights in his UFC career. Again, one of those fighters, wherever it's him on the receiving end or whether it's him winning the fight, he's always in a fun fight. Justin Gaethje versus Dan Hooker would just be bloody carnage. It would just be back and forth, blood everywhere. The ref's probably going to have to step in like he did with Nate Diaz and Jorge Masvidal. It would be a brutal fight. Um, and I think Dan Hooker versus Justin Gaethje is probably the most entertaining striker versus striker matchup you can make in the UFC. I always like the technical fight but sometimes you just want to see two people go back and forth and completely dominate. That kind of sounds a bit odd, but you want to see two people just go out there and put in a great striking performance. So I'm going to go with Gaethje and Dan Hooker for the lightweight division. Then for the featherweight division, grappler versus a grappler, I'm going to go straight into it because it's a fight that's already been announced. And it's Movzor Evloev versus Aljamain Still. And this fight has kind of been getting a lot of hate. People have been saying it's going to be really boring. I feel like when you've got two high-level grapplers against each other, unless they kind of just cancel it out and put in a, a stinky performance on the feet, a lot of the time it tends to be quite fun. And I'm not saying this is going to be like Justin Gaethje versus Dan Hooker level, but I'm actually really intrigued to see Sterling versus Evloa because Aljamain Sterling, we knew him for being this heavy wrestler in the bantamweight division, came up at UFC 300, absolutely dominated Calvin Cater with wrestling, and Movzor Evloa, an undefeated fighter on his come up, known for his heavy wrestling. Has he been found out a few times by guys like Arnold Allen and Diego Lopez? Yes, but is Aljamain still in the same type of fighter as Diego Lopez and Arnold Allen, where he's able to expose Evloa on the feet? No, I think Evloa versus Sterling, I can't wait for this, well, I'm not going to say I can't wait, but I'm looking, kind of looking forward to this fight at UFC 307, because I'm interested to see how Evloa deals with a grappler like Sterling. 
Sterling. And likewise, I'm interested to see how Sterling deals with a grappler like Evloev. So I'm going to go with Movzor Evloev versus Sterling for the featherweight grappling matchup. And for the striking matchup again, it's a fight that's been announced and quite possibly... The most entertaining fight right now, or at least the most exciting and intriguing fight up and coming now in the UFC. Max Holloway versus Ilya Teporia is a fight that I just can't wait for. It's probably the fight I can't look at, like I'm, I'm more excited for than any other fight right now announced in the UFC. It's 50-50. They're both coming off spectacular wins, and I just can't wait for this fight between Holloway. I mean, they're both coming on amazing wins. I mean, Max Holloway just knocked out Justin Gaethje, arguably the best knockout. Not arguably. I'm going to say definitely 100% the best knockout right now that we've had in 2020 at UFC 300. Ili Teporia, one of the best knockouts this year as well when he knocked out Aljamain Stillman, not Aljamain Stillman, when he knocked out Alexander Volkanovsky for the featherweight belt. Something that Max Holloway couldn't do. You've had a guy who's been in the UFC for ages versus a guy who's fairly new to the UFC. You've got the champion versus a contender. A guy that beat Volk versus a guy that couldn't. Two guys coming off spectacular wins. It's a 50-50 fight and I can guarantee it's going to be a boxing masterclass from both of them and I just don't see this one going the distance. Holloway versus Teporia. It's going to be on everyone's striker versus striker list for the, for the featherweight weight division and then for the bantam weight division a grappler versus a grappler the first grappler that I've chosen is Uman Namagomedov. I mean, I've already spoken about the bantamweight division a lot this week, but Namagomedov, I would say, is the best pure wrestler. Right now in the bantamweight division, he's undefeated. The way that he looked against Corey Sandhagen was amazing. Sandhagen's a good grappler, and he was able to, you know, implement a very do grappling dominant game plan in that fight. Um, the recent, the fights before that as well, like against Begsat and these other guys in the bantamweight division, he's just been able to run through people like a hot knife through butter because of how good his wrestling actually is. And in terms of who we put him against, again, it's got to, we've kind of just got Got to put him against Marab, the guy who's going to be fighting for a belt this weekend. Maybe, you know, that come this time next week, he's going to be the belt and belt and champion of the world. And we are going to see this fight next. But yeah, you've got to go with Marab as well. Setting records on PT and completely dominated PT and made it look completely easy in that fight. Made Yan look like a complete amateur, despite him being a former champion. And then the same thing to Henry Sahudo. Made Sahudo look like an amateur when it comes to grappling, despite having these this big background in wrestling and being a champion in two different weight classes before. Marab makes legends look like bums. And he's just such a, just a high, just a relentless takedown after takedown doesn't stop type of grappler. And I'd love to see Namagomedov versus Marab. Um, I can guarantee you'll probably cancel out and it'll be more of a striking matchup in which I'll definitely favour Namagomedov. But if these guys were to initiate in grappling, I'd be really interested to see how they both face. Because they, two look, they both look like two unstoppable forces in grappling. You put them together, I really want to see what happens. So for the bantamweight division, I'm going to go with Namagomedov and Marab. And for striking in the bantamweight division, you've got to go with uh, Sean O'Malley, the current bantamweight champion of the world. The guy's going to be and then his belt this weekend. Knocked out Al Jermaine Sterling, the guy who is running the heavyweight division. People are saying that Sterling's about to become the featherweight, the, sorry, the bantamweight goat. Just knocked him out and stopped people from saying that. Recently put him one of the most dominant title performances against Marlon Vera. Absolutely bullied Marlon Vera in that fight. His run-up to the UFC was just him sleeping people left, right, and center. And I'd say he's definitely top five or at least top ten best strikers in the UFC. But I think we're going to give him that top five spot because of the performances he just had on a consistent basis. And I would put him against Corey Sandhagen, who's still, in my opinion, I'd say he's a lot more well-rounded, but he's still one of the best strikers in the bantamweight division. Again, he also, I won't say was as dominant, but he was able to completely shut down Marlon Vera on the feet in their fight. He's had some spectacular KOs in his UFC career. He's very, very crafty. I love how he makes up his Muay Thai. He's just such a good striker, is Corey Sandhagen as well. Sean O'Malley versus Corey Sandhagen. Obviously, it doesn't make the most sense right now because one's the champion and one's coming off a loss. But if we were to ever see this fight, man, this is one of the fights I'm looking for forward to in the UFC. This would give me the same amount of hype as a fight like Ilya Tapori versus Max Holloway would because it's just two of the best or some of the best in the bantamweight division going at it. And on the feet, I'd be so intrigued to see how they both kind of complement each other's striking style. So I'm going to go with Corey Sandin again normally for the bantamweight division. Then for the flyweight division, a grappler versus a grappler. For the, for the first grappler, I'm going to go with the bant the, the, sorry, the flyweight champion of the world, Alejandro Pantoja. Submitted the likes of Brandon Moreno. Submitted the likes of uh, Brandon Royval. His entire title reign so far, and even before his title reign, the amount of guys he's beaten in the flyweight division just from having a very grappling-heavy style. Now, I know he likes to engage in a bit of a, a, a bit of a scrap on the feet from time to time, but his jiu-jitsu is some of the best, or at least his ability to mix in the grappling with the striking is really good as well. He's, his wrestling ability is super impressive, and I would put him against Tatsuro Tyra, one of the most crafty submissioners. Just his jiu-jitsu is so impressive. I know that fight ended in a ended in a no contest well it was a, it wasn't a no contest but he got injured in that fight but that Ciro Tyra versus Alex Perez he looked so good with his jiu-jitsu in that fight Perez isn't that bad I know he's a bit of a journeyman these days 
but he ain't that bad in the flyweight division. For Tatsuro Taira to look like he did in that fight, his jiu-jitsu really impressed me in that fight with Alex Perez. And even in his fights before that, he's always had super dominant jiu-jitsu in the UFC. His stand-up might need some work, but as far as grappling goes, it's going to be very hard for a guy like Pantoja to be able to just dominate a guy like Tatsuro Taira on the ground when Tatsuro Taira's jiu-jitsu is that high level. And I hope Tatsuro Taira does get a title shot eventually because Pantoja versus Taira, even though it, you know they might not be the biggest names in the UFC and it might not be this flashy striking matchup, if you're a fan of MMA, this is a fact that you want to be tuning into because it's two of the best grapplers in the flyweight division going down. And as far as striking goes, you've got to include Brandon Royval, I feel like, when it comes to flyweight striking. I mean, the dude just recently got a really, well, I said recently, it was early this year, but got a really impressive underdog win against Brandon Moreno by using his box. And he's always been one of the best boxers in the UFC, well, not in the UFC, but in the flyweight division. He's just so kind of elusive with his striking. He might not be the most powerful dude in the flyweight division, but his just ability to go in and out, his durability across five rounds, the fact that he's so quick and, as well as the flyweight division, he just blitzes in and blitzes out. I'm a really big fan of Brandon Roy Val's style in the flyweight division when it comes to striking. And I'm going to put him against somebody that he's faced before in Kai Kara France, especially the recent Kai Kara France that we've been seeing as well. Just recently got that super impressive knockout over Steve Ersig. He's had some spectacular knockouts in his UFC career. He's been engaged in some brawls. And even the facts that haven't got his way, like the Brandon Moreno fight and like the Emir Albazi fight, he was able to rough those guys up on the feet at times as well. And I feel like a rematch between Roy Val and Kai Kara France, it's just a fact that you can't really complain about despite seeing it before. So that is my best style versus style matchup in every single weight class in the UFC. Uh, the facts that I think will be the funnest and the facts that I would just want to see them all. So let me know your thoughts on these matchups and thank you for watching.